I have this gripe with uh, Anurag ji all the time that you can't start a conference by putting a chartered account in front of everyone because he's very, very conservative. And I am a chartered accountant. I am extremely conservative. So some of my data points will be really bad. Bear with me. I hope during the rest of the day, things do get better. All right. But I'm a chartered accountant with a good design team. So at least you get pretty slides. All right. So, um, yeah, so I, I've actually been tracking media now for 20 years, almost more than 20, 23 years or so. And I have honestly only once before seen a shift as drastic as connected TV. And that's when mobile uh, grew wings with the introduction of low cost uh, data plans. That was one event that changed how it changed culture. People started consuming things differently. They started consuming different things. I think now we are at that inflection point on connected TV as well, where, where let's look at it. Let's be honest. There was a large screen in the house, which was owned by four, five, six broadcasters. That walled garden has broken. And what we are seeing is a, an era where uh, that large screen will now have a thousand players inside and not be dominated anymore by a f small set of four, five, six companies. And that's going to change everything. Our estimates show that broadcaster content, which is now almost 100% on large screens in the home in a, in a linear TV environment, will come down to only about 70% uh, in about three years from now. So 30% of the content that will be consumed on connected TVs within a few years will not be from the larger broadcasters. And that's going to be a massive change. So like a good chartered accountant, I will start with numbers. All right. Uh, a lot of numbers uh, Batraji spoke about. Our number is that in 2021, there were 10 million homes, which reached about 20 million homes in 2023. Now, what is this 20 million number? And what is the data that's gone behind this 20 million number? Let me just spend a minute on that, because I find the definition of uh, connected TV households varies significantly. In order to make sense of connected TV, I started using MAUs just like everyone else uses in the industry. And then I realized it's one of the stupidest metrics on earth. It doesn't really matter. So I said, let me go to something where I can compare it with television. Television is measured on a weekly basis in this country. So I said, let me look at a weekly active user base. But a weekly active user base, I realized, is also a pretty dumb metric. Because sometimes what happens, you fire up a connected TV, you watch for less than a minute and shut down. And you don't do anything else in the week. So I have taken a number which is weekly active users more than one hour a week. And that's the 20 million number that I'm putting up here. So that's also, I, I find, I don't know whether it's conservative or not. For me as a CA, that's really not conservative. It's very aggressive because one hour a week is rubbish. But I'm going with that for the time being. And that really gives me uh, this 19.5, 20 million number that you're seeing out here. But, okay, then I try to triangulate this thing. How does this work? Most people use it on wired broadband in the home or home Wi-Fi, or do they use it through their mobile phones, you know, casting it onto their TV? So I worked a little with Samsung. Uh, I think they were very cooperative. They shared a lot of data with us. Uh, and what we realized is that the uh, two things. One is that most of them were working on good quality data connections. Uh, and, and while there was an audience base that's not working on, on wired uh, broadband, that's not working on good quality Wi-Fi, that tends to be ca more casual. There's not really a lot of consumption happening over there as compared to, the obviously, the wired guys. Uh, and that number may be just about 20% of the total viewers, and it's falling uh, significantly, right? So I then said, okay, let me try and triangulate these numbers that we have with the wired broadband connections available in India. As per TREI, we have about 38 million wired broadband homes uh, in India as of now. And I am, and out of that, there's, about, there's BSNL homes as well, which are still 256 kbps. That's about 8 million. So if I remove that, we actually have 30 million Indian households with good quality uh, broadband today. From that, I have a number which is around 20 million, which is two thirds. Again, I don't know whether it's right or wrong, but it seems to be logical. And therefore, for my forward projections, I've kind of used this percentage of two thirds, growing it slightly, uh, and, and, and taken points of view from Geo, from Airtel, et cetera, on how their broadband numbers are expected to grow higher on the wired and the wireless side, because now Geo has air fiber, which is a fantastic product. 
Uh, and based on that, I've tried to triangulate, and I come up with a number that by next year we should be at 25 million. But I think within by 2030, uh, that number is actually going to cross 70 million in our estimations. I'm just giving you the background of how I have come up with the numbers. May not be the right way, but it's, it's the best I can do. Um, which means that by 2030, uh, the Indian large screen video consumption market will break up into three large and very important segments. You'll have the connected TV segment, uh, which is 118 million homes today. The pay TV, sorry, the, sorry, the pay TV segment, which is 118 million homes today, uh, which includes pirated homes, by the way. Your broadcasters don't get paid for 118 million homes, they get paid for a lesser number of homes. And that 118 million homes, we are seeing a continuous decline, uh, which is, you know, it's, it was falling a lot faster. Last year was a bit of an aberration. It fell, but fell very little, uh, because you had uh, a, a great IPL and a great World Cup. Right? So that kind of slowed the fall down, but I don't see, I don't see that continuing because richer audiences are migrating to uh, connected TV and OTT platforms. So we see that 118 million coming down to 83 million. Free TV in this country, I have, I'm very bullish on it. So that 45 million will keep growing and keep growing and go up to 67 million. Uh, it's going to be, it is already the largest platform on earth for TV distribution. And I, I, prop, I, I can't see it going any other way. Um, unless, of course, people, the regulations change. And of course, then there's CTV, which like I said is 20 million going up to 70 million. So by 2030, you'll have three very interesting and large segments for large screen video consumption. The interesting thing that comes out of this is that, well, if you're a broadcaster, you can't really ignore any of these three platforms, can you? You can't let one third of your audience not be there for you. And therefore, whatever you do, it's going to have implications on how advertising is sold. It's going to have implications on what content you produce and on what price you produce that content. Because you can't have very, very expensive content for free TV and only say uh, CTV will have expensive content, free TV will have cheap content. I don't think that's how it works. You'll have to do windowing, but then the content needs to resonate across large swaths of the country, right? Um, in, in addition to that, it will have a big implication on how um, the distribution actually works, what kind of, uh, you know, pricing that you will have to put across the three platforms. And once you move on to digital pricing, it's self-fragments, right? It's not about saying, I'll give you a monthly plan like on pay TV. You move into T-Word, you move into special prices, you move into festival pricing on the fly. Literally within two, three days, you can implement a whole bunch of pricing options. So uh, that's why I said when I started off that, the kind of change that we're going to see because of CTV, once it gets to scale, I think is only going to you know, be second to perhaps only what we saw when the mobile really grew in this country. Um, some stats, some are mine, some are Samsung, some are industry discussions, so bear with me. But 93% of all the TV shipments in 2023 were smart. Something funny has happened with all the percentages have come off. I don't know why, so all these are percentage numbers. All right, 93% of TV shipments were, were smart TVs last year. Um, and for Samsung TV specifically, because we got their data, they had a 37% growth last year itself. But the interesting thing about that growth is that the growth is driven by larger screen TVs and not the smaller screen TVs. So the rich people are clearly shifting to, um, you know, the CTV environment. Top five brands give you now about a 45% share of market. Now that is very interesting. And the reason it's interesting is because the lion's share still is Chinese brands, local brands, and a bunch of maybe 20, 30 manufacturers and brands that are in the market who make up a, 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 a large part of the balance, 55%. So for a, for a company that wants to play in the space, how many formats will you need to creep your content and your platform ready in becomes very, very difficult. Uh, and therefore, you know, the, of course, the main market will be the top five, top ten brands, but we'll have to go very deep into the kind of content and the kind of formats we're creating. Um, it is, of course, still an urban phenomena, but as 5G percolates and as uh, LCO-led broadband connections percolate across India, I think that percentage of 72% should start coming down significantly over the next few years. And finally, it, as of now, the male audience is much higher. Now, this is very interesting because, um, you know, I asked the guys, how did you figure out it's a male audience? 
and not a you know, female audience, a female audience, what's their age group, all of that. Because the only thing you really know is where's that thing? Where's your smart TV? And that brought out a very interesting point of view that unlike mobile, it's actually going to be more difficult to target customers from an advertising perspective on smart TV. We need to see a lot more innovation in that on how large data sets merge before you can actually treat the large screen and connected TV as a digital product. So there's going to be a lot more innovation going forward on that. Um, last five stats. Um, on average, five apps were being used on the TV. And surprise, surprise, three apps were AVOD and two were SVOD. So in the FIKI report that we release, uh, we show that there are about 43 million Indian households who actually pay for one or more subscriptions. And there's a total of 97 million paid subscriptions in India today, right? Which is an average of 2.2. And it's interesting to see that even on the CTV platform, it's still two subscriptions on average uh, that are being paid for. So even though the screens are bigger and more expensive and so on, they're still only paying for two. One of the reasons for this could be just the sheer fatigue of managing so many subscriptions. Um, and therefore, I feel that bundling will play a very good role going forward. Uh, average time per month per CTV was 40 hours, which is just about a little more than an hour a day. Uh, a lot of this is currently because in many homes, the CTV is still in the bedroom, and that's a nighttime viewing, perhaps. Uh, but when you look at the 62-minute average time per day per user, that's a very healthy number. Uh, actually, the time spent on AWOD is slightly higher than this. The time spent on SWOD is slightly lower than this. So that still shows that despite having a CTV and a good broadband connection, AWOD continues to rule. The number one platform by far is YouTube, obviously, on CTV as well, right? Um, time spent on AWOD is twice the time spent on SWOD, <laughs> all right? So it's still a tough battle. Uh, that we're going to fight from an OTT point of view on the CTV. But, and of course, the last part is on the monetization, where currently the market benchmark I hear from a lot of my clients is that if on linear TV you're paying 100 bucks, people are willing to pay 10 bucks for the same slot on connected TV as a thumb rule. But I feel that's going to change significantly because this is a far more valuable audience than the average TV audience. Um, this is Samsung data on Samsung smart TVs. And like you can see, by far the number one is YouTube. Uh, but then the Samsung TV Plus, and that's very interesting. So my top two apps are AWOD, understandable. But having an aggregator app like a Samsung TV Plus as the second app actually brought a lot of thoughts to my mind to say what exactly is happening here, because it's getting more monthly users than a number of other apps like Netflix, uh, Disney, Hotstar, etc. Geo Cinema did not have the IPL at the time of this, so uh, please consider that, otherwise that number would be far, far higher, right? Um, and, and that really came to me to say that fast is really important. The free ad supported uh, streaming television is something that's working. And what's happening is that when people are shifting from linear television onto connected TV, it's not like they're going to suddenly stop consuming the linear TV content that they've been viewing for 20 years, right? And they're continuing to do that on the connected TV environment. And therefore, apps like uh, the aggregator apps of OEMs like Samsung uh, or Xiaomi, or even, uh, according to me, the Brahmastra, Geo Television. Geo TV is a fantastic app on the mobile. If that makes its way onto CTV in the same avatar, it's going to be a very, very interesting play. And I think Fast will have a humongous stay still in the CTV environment. Um, of course, how the models will work, we'll have to figure out. But the consumption is going to be extremely high, and that's very, very clear from this data. Um, monetization, right? We're all talking so much great growth, but where's the money? These are our numbers from the FIKI report. Um, total TV revenue as per EY in 2023 was 29,700 crores, um, growing to 33,000 crores within three years by 2026. Out of that, our estimate is that the CTV ad revenue was around 1,400 crores or about 5%. Again, the percentages are missing. I don't know why. Bear with me, please. Okay. Um, and that's excluding YouTube on CTV. This is just what the large broadcasters in India probably make and a few other smaller aggregators. 
Um, and that 1,400 will more than double to 10% of the market within three years uh, to cross 3,000 crore rupees. That's our estimate on this. So it's a slightly smaller number because it doesn't include YouTube, uh, but that's how we are seeing it right now. The, the, the positives, of course, about the monetization is it's a premium audience and you can do a lot of geographic segmentation. But on the other hand, on the right side, you know, you are competing often with programmatic ad rates, uh, which brings down the CPM. And you still don't have deeper preference data and a lot of work needs to be done on that to make things happen. The other thing like we spoke about, I spoke about briefly is bundling and I find it very important. Uh, our estimates today show that about half of uh, the SWOD packs sold are bundled, half are directly sold. It may be plus minus eight, 10 percent, but that's how we are seeing the market. But clearly the shift is going to be towards uh, a bundled play in the future. Why I'm saying that is because I think, I think digital is in this sense. In CTV, digital is going to mimic linear TV. And the way that Tata Play and Airtel, uh, DTH and, and Hathaway and Den uh, had come in and aggregated content from all the large uh, production studios and provided it on TV, I think we're going to see a lot more of that happening on digital as well. Uh, in my mind, that's inevitable. And if we want to see the growth uh, that I'm showing, it has to be done because otherwise it just becomes too expensive. People are not really comfortable paying for three, four, five subscriptions. It's just a pain. Bundling will be extremely important for the growth. Um, apart from that, there are many more monetization opportunities. Uh, I think CTV will have a massive kids play. Uh, and I think we've not even started seeing the innovation that this area deserves in the country. Uh, custom premium feeds are going to be extremely important. If I love uh, beekeeping, now is the chance for someone to create a beekeeping channel because the distribution costs are not that exorbitant anymore. I don't need to create a broadcast infra. I don't need to you know, pay carriage fees. Well, maybe we do. I'll come to that later. But custom premium feeds still will be very important. I think you can really grow the scope of how people use CTV and, again, mimicking a little bit of what we do on mobile phones. Niche library channels. All the broadcasters in India have, I'm guessing, way over 50,000 hours up to 2 lakh hours of content. All of that can be repurposed significantly in a CTV environment. You can create fast channels which say only deal with Saregama or only deal with CID or only deal with Anupama, whatever it is, right? Um, TVOD becomes a big opportunity and I think we are already seeing a lot of action on TVOD. Uh, our estimate is it's crossing 2,000, 2,500 crores of top line already in India from a content plus gaming point of view. Uh, and we should see, sorry, just a content point of view, not gaming, two, 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 uh, two and a half thousand crores. And that, I think, will get a huge flip, uh, especially on the movie library side when it comes to this uh, CTV environment. Um, news is already one of the most sticky areas on CTV today with lots of time spent because it kind of plays in the background. Uh, but I see a movement again towards areas of interest, like my beekeeping example. Uh, Everyone will have custom, can get custom news. Uh, you can get many more communities built. Uh, so this is kind of a link from what Facebook is exceptionally good at, uh, moving towards connected TV. It gives an, in, uh, an opportunity for content studios to build communities using a very large screen and great experience. Um, and of course, aggregation and bundling. I, I find this fascinating because we've had so many media companies which do both broadcasting and distribution. Uh, how will that play out in the CTV environment where who will do the aggregation? Will it be done by the OEMs? Will it be done by distribution companies like Tata Play who have a fantastic product in Binge Plus? Uh, will it be done by absolute third party STB manufacturers perhaps? Will it be done by uh, telcos? I think everyone is going to be there in that bundling play and that's where the real magic uh, will happen in terms of content aggregation. We may see content aggregation also being done by the broadcasters themselves in, at a much larger scale than they did with television. And finally, of course, gaming. It lends itself to gaming, no brainer. Um, last slide. So what are the imperatives therefore? I think most importantly from an ad point of view, uh, the tech stack is supremely important right now. Uh, never been more important to get the right ads in at the right time at the right price. Uh, both basic direct deals as well as programmatic deals as well as non-FCT inventory. There's going to be a huge uh, demand for ad tech uh, 
uh, custom for built for CTV. My ad sales packages will need to be evolved. And this is more difficult than it looks like because in the next few years as a broadcaster, how will I do the ad sales package for CTV? Will it be separate from what I'm doing on pay TV? Or will it be combined? Or will it also integrate with what I'm doing on my OTT platform? I think how those packages evolve will drive a lot of the future. Uh, my CPMs are currently much higher than my mobile CPMs. Will they stay there? Or do we need to work more to get those higher? Another key question. And finally, how do I leverage the data that CTV gives me? How do I build, make it richer through partnerships or other means, and then use that data, not just for my CTV, but to sell solutions to an advertiser, which could then cross over from linear to CTV? On the subscription side, three points. Syndication, I think massive opportunities for syndication, and I think the guys who win eventually will syndicate at massive scale, uh, and will not, it'll no longer be about people have to come to watch my content on my platform, but I'm gonna put my content out everywhere, and people can watch it wherever they think. And I think that's gonna be one of the biggest changes we'll see from a distribution point of view. Um, pricing, we're gonna move into dynamic pricing. It has to happen. It's no longer gonna be 100 rupees a month for my pack. It's gonna be like the telcos did it during the VAS era, where they look at your wallet, say, okay, this guy's been spending 40 bucks a month and not more, we will create 40 buck packages for them. Works on digital, it will work on CTV. Uh, and of course, the niche opportunity that I discussed, me and my beekeeping love, or my love for gadgets, or cars, or whatever it is, history, I think we'll have a lot more content coming there. And finally, the tough part. Like, that's all manageable, but this is really where it gets extremely difficult. What's going to be my content strategy for CTV? Do I, as a broadcaster, remit myself to the same content that I was always producing, the 70% of uh, what of the 100% being broadcaster content, do I move into the balance 30% which is social media, which is gaming, which is all kinds of, you know, uh, innovative content that, you know, is happening on digital today as we speak. Uh, how will content discovery happen? Uh, and this is what I was talking about, about carriage fees as well. Will I end up having to market my content on a whole new platform? How do I market that content? Will the owners of the aggregation platforms, will the owners of the operating systems of the CTV come and say, I need, uh, you know, you need to give me something before I will put your content up first because I have content from 20 different platforms today or 50 different platforms today. So how will discovery and carriage fee work? And of course, the fact that there will be an explosion in operating systems and apps and, and the a, that's more expensive to manage, and B, the impact it has on the user experience is going to be significant as well. In TV, it was simple. It was content streaming. But here, the UX varies across different operating systems, and the investment on that will become really important, almost a hygiene factor. Uh, and finally, of course, the non-long-form opportunity. To say, I'm, as, as a broadcaster, we've normally has been on the long-form side. What now can I do outside of that? That's it from my side. I hope you enjoyed. I tried to set a context here. Bear with me on the numbers. Nobody knows the real numbers today. Thank you very much.